All right, hey, welcome to week six, database development design. This will be part of our walkthrough lab, which will be the SQL Server intro, uh, building databases and tables. All right, if you're in my class, we're going to be using the school's SQL Server database. We don't have to worry about the first steps. But if not, if you, if you want to try it on your home computer, uh, I got a link here with the um, walkthrough on how to install both the Express Edition and the more com more recent SQL Server Developer Edition, and I'll put a link for this down in the description. I will also have a link for my video down here in the uh, description as well. But this is a link for this current video we'll walk through everything we're going to do here. Okay, so assuming you got SQL Server Management Studio installed, let's go and hop over to it. Uh, Look for it under SQL Server Management Studio, or you can type in SSMS into your taskbar, into the magnifying glass, and it'll pop up. Uh, the first thing it's going to ask here, and let me see if I can zoom in a little for you guys. It's going to ask you which server you want to connect to, and if it's the school, you're going to put in the school server information. Windows authentication we're going to use. Uh, that's just the standard. Uh, things like SQL Server authentication is where you can set up a, an SA user within SQL Server. We're not going to get into that too much. In Azure, that's all for clouds. So we'll just leave it at Windows Authentication. I'm just going to keep this one, which is my desktop, and I'm just going to connect. And then over here in the left, you're going to see your database is connected. Up here, you see this plug? The X, you can disconnect by clicking on that, and I'll get rid of the server if you want to get out. Uh, all right. So remember, keep in mind, SQL Server is not a database. It's a database management system. The databases sit here inside here. Now there's a couple ways you can build a new database. Again, if you're in my class, we're working with the databases you're given. You won't have the authority to do it, authorization to do this in the system, but if you set it up at home, you can. So I'll just go up here to where it says databases, right click and type click new database. This window will come up. I'm just going to put a name for the database in here. I'll call it test one and I will leave everything else as default. Uh, hit OK do its thing and you'll see I now have a test one as a database down here. Option B is to go under here under new query and just type create. We'll create I'll create a database called test. Create database test. Okay. Semicolon at the end. Again, you don't actually have to use the semicolon. It, it is good habit. Uh, another thing you can use within Microsoft is the word go. I don't use that only because no other system does, so it's just kind of a habit. I don't think it's good to get into. But you can use it, and you are correct. Uh, you can highlight the text. If you don't highlight, it'll do everything in this script, but if you highlight, it'll only run what you want it to, which doesn't really matter here. It's the only thing here. Go to Execute, and now you're not going to see it right away here, so what you're going to do is go up to your databases and refresh, and there you'll see it. Test. Okay, so we're going to work on test. Okay. If you want to get rid of a database, you can right-click, delete. This will come up. Uh, delete an object, and you'll uh, make sure you want to hit this close connect existing connections too, and just hit OK down here, and that'll delete it. Or from the text here, we can just say drop database test one. We don't want that one. We just made it just for fun, and it would help to spell correctly. But again, here highlight and. Execute and because it's currently in use. Okay, so that's just locked within use. So let's go ahead and just do it this way. We'll go ahead, we'll right click on it again, delete, bring this up, and I'll hit, oops, and I'm going to hit close existing connections and OK, and that should get rid of it. There you go. It's going, going, and gone. All right, so we've created our database. Now the next step is we want to be able to tell the system which database we want to use. Uh, if you look here, you have you have a drop down up here. Like I said, up here we have this drop down of all the available databases for you here. So you could go in here and pick. If you wanted to work with tests, you can go in there and pick. Let's say we wanted to work with the new DV test. You can click that, and it's there. It's active. Now, notice it only stays active if you're in the query window here. So 
another way to do it, and this is kind of the way I prefer, I'm just going to delete this here, is just go ahead and type in use test. So I put this at the top of all my script. That way, if somebody else uses it, they automatically know exactly which database to use. And now you see it says test is there. Okay. So we're going to go part of our next thing. We're going to build some tables. And I'm just going to open up a script I've got here. So why reinvent the wheel? So I'm going to go to new, open, file. Get rid of these. If I don't want to, I'm going to go back, use test, put it up front. Don't really need to because it doesn't matter. And also keep in mind, notice I'm using lowercase test and it's uppercase here. SQL Server is uh, case insensitive. You can set it to be case sensitive, but most people don't. All right, so here we go. We're going to create a couple tables. Now, the first thing you want to see here is the code for creating a table. It's pretty simple. It's create table, table name, and then inside parentheses. And then you're going to set your columns here. These are your columns and these are the data types. So you have co an integer, an invar char, this is a string up to 255 characters. This one's only up to 50 characters. The, notice they're all separated by a comma and at the top one I put this word primary key. This is how I'm setting the primary key here. So for this table and then I'm doing the same thing down here, creating a table, bump, bump. But down here you'll notice I've got this contractor that matches the contractor ID here. So this is our foreign key for this table to connect, and we'll worry about getting to the foreign key in a second. We'll set the foreign key in a second, but first we're just going to go ahead, go there, and execute. Now again, if I go to my set test here, and I refresh, and I open it up, you can hit the square to open here, and I go to tables, now you're going to see the tables I created, and you can even go in here and look at the columns, and you can see the columns, and you can see I've got the primary key there. Uh, another way to create tables, uh, this is another way to do it, not one I prefer, but you can go to right-click here on tables and hit new table. And this will pop up. And again, this is another way to do it if you want, uh, if you're not so much into writing the code, but you can just type in a column name like contract. You give it a data type of an integer, and you can have you have the drop down so you can see all your data types here. Uh, and again, most there's a lot of these you probably don't not, never use. Don't worry about it. Then once you got that, uh, allow nulls means the key, that that column can be empty. You'd never want to do that on a primary key. But once you've got that set, all you do is you go ahead and hit the X. It'll say, "Do you want to save it?" Yeah, and then name your table down here, and I'll name it. just unwanted they don't really want it but that's it so that's how you can create one using the GUI too uh, now and it should be if I go and refresh now we're gonna find that unwanted table in here now too yep unwanted uh, okay so that's that we got that we created these two tables contractor and permit and as I said we created a column here which is going to be a foreign key to the contractor table off the permit cable. So if you actually look at permits, look at columns, you see it doesn't say it yet. So what we're going to do, it says primary key. So we're going to alter table permit. This is the code here. Alter table. That means we're going to make a change to the table. That's the code we're using. Add a foreign key, and we're going to give the name of the column. Contractor ID. And again, we're working on the permit cable table. We're not working from the contractor table because we want the permit cable has the foreign key and it's going to reference the contractor table and contractor ID. So this is add foreign key to the column you want in your table up here and it references table name and the column in that table it references. So we go here, we execute this, and now if I go over here and I refresh, it's off the, um, it, I, it says, I'm sorry, it's down right below, it got off the menu there, but I just, I hit refresh is all I hit. And then I can look at the columns here. And now you'll see I have a foreign key. So we've set up two tables with a foreign key. Pretty simple. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we are going to, let's put some data in here. Okay, a couple ways you can put data in a table. One way, you can literally go over here, let's go to unwanted. And you can edit, see it says here, edit top 200 rows. 
and you could manually type in stuff one two three and I can go to the next one go to the next one and when I'm done I just close that out then I could go here back to unwanted take a look and see it and you see it does a quick select query and there there's our three copies well three rows I'm sorry close that out but to do it in SQL to do it in SQL what we're gonna do and let me so I can get this to stretch out a little here for you so you can see what's going on if I grab the right screen alright so the code for this one is very simple it's insert into and then the name of the table and then I pet values and notice that I've got a bunch of values all comma separated and they're all aligned with columns in the table. You notice I've got one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So I have one, which the first one's an integer, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Each row is sep is, is put in parentheses and separated by a comma. And if I just sit hit this and run it. There we go. Now same thing. I'm gonna do the same thing for permit. I'm gonna hit that and run it. Just so you can see it. And let me go ahead and grab my this screen again so I can drag it back over. So now I could just right click on the table and show it again, or you can just really simply, it's a simple command if you want to see what's going on in here. We could just say select star from contractor. We're going to get deeper into select statements and everything first, but I, and there's really nothing, I, unfortunately I have to teach you how to build some tables and stuff before we can do select because there's nothing you can select if you don't have any tables to build. But if I just do select from contractor, execute, and you'll see those that that's the data I put in up here. Okay, another way we can bring in data is to bring it in from a, a file. And now I've got the file here on my website here, you can scroll down da, 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 somewhere down here. Once you get to the importing data, so add the daily table right here. So this Excel file right here, this permits data. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it open as an Excel file so you can all see it. Okay, so this is the ta the the data sheet. Uh, you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five columns. You notice we do not have that contractor ID column here. Okay, so we're going to deal with that in a second. So the first thing we want to do is, <coughs> I'm sorry, instead of in, instead of typing this all in, we're just going to import this file. So the first thing we want to do is go over and import the file. Now I'm going to import this file into what I like to call a landing table. So what a landing table is, it's a, it's a table that I load the data into, I can check it, mess with it before I push it to my production tables. I don't want to import directly into my production tables because there's a chance you can mess them up. So to do this, we're going to right click test, we're going to hit task, you are going to, hold on, I'm going to have to adjust this so you can see better, one second. All right, this is an eye chart, but you pick your database you hit tasks and then you scroll down to this down here it says import data okay if you can't see it go to my website I got pictures of this but so it's tasks then import data make sure you do it off the database you want to work with all right first page pops up you can just hit next you can actually click this if you never want to see it again uh, data source so this is the data we're bringing in so keep in mind we have data coming in. So the data coming in is going to be an Excel file. We're going to browse for it. It's going to be in my downloads and there it is. And it does have column row names at the top. The top row is a column name and it should match what kind of Excel file it is. 297-2003 which is XLS. If you have problems sometimes loading the XLS X into SQL Server because of certain drivers just save the files in XLS. It'll always work. Just a trick. So I hit next. Now we're going to pick where it goes. Scroll to the bottom. You'll look for the SQL Server native client. If you have more than one, like 10 and 11 or 11 and 12, just pick wherever the newest one you have is. Hit next. 
it should go to your server name, Windows Authentic. This should all be good if you clicked off the right server. So if not, if you made a mistake, here's where you can change the server list. But we're going to leave it at test. And we're going to copy data from one or more tables or views. We're not going to, otherwise you have to write your own specific query. We're not going to do that. We're just going to copy. Hit next. This comes up, just pick the top one. Uh, it sometimes picks up some metadata in the Excel file you don't want to worry about. So we're going to go over here, and we're just going to change this name here. We're going to change the name to Permits Landing. Okay. We're going to hit Next. Actually, from here, you could actually go to here and preview. Get an idea of what, so you can see you do have the correct data you want to see. You know. Uh, go to Next. Run immediately. You don't have to worry about saving this package. Just run immediately and just hit finish. It'll go, bum, bum. It should only take a few seconds because it's not very big. And what you'll see here is 75 rows transferred. That's successful. So we close. Go back over here. Let's refresh our table and look at the tables. And we now have permits landing. Now I'd like to point out what, <coughs> what I want to do now is I want to move permits landing into permit. But as we said before, permit has this column that doesn't exist in permits landing contractor ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little line to the code. So we're going to go insert into permit, much like we did up here. We're going to insert into permit, but now we're going to list the columns we have. Since we don't have the contractor, we're only going to list the first ones, permit ID, state, project, location. Now notice I have location in these square brackets. That's because watch this when I take the brackets off. Location lights up blue. That means it's a it's a a word that's used. It's a keyword used by SQLite. So to let it know you don't want the keyword, but you only want a column, just put it in square brackets. And then so I'm saying insert into that table on these columns only. So we're gonna not gonna put anything into the last column, and we're gonna say select all from our permit landing table, which we just installed. Uh, I got to change it to permits, sorry, not permit, permits landing. And uh, as you'll see, permits landing's got these. And we'll just say go ahead and we will run this. So now when I go and I select star from permits, I should have a total of or from permit, I should have a total of 76, I want to say, records. Let's see. All right. Let me s move my screen down so you can see. So as you can see here, here's all the records came through. You see all the nulls? That's all the ones that didn't have any contractor ID. You notice only one has it, and that's the one we put in up here, this, this row we put in up here. That's the only one with anything in the contract right there. You can go back and change it. But now you'll see down at the bottom here, you see it says 76 rows. So we're good. So we got the 75 rows we brought in from the permits landing table plus the one we put in ourselves. All right, so this is just a quick and dirty introduction of how to create tables, create databases, and load data into them. Uh, we're going to go on now and start to learn about, you know, how to use the SQL language to query and work with the data. All right, thank you very much, and look forward to seeing you.